What is up, everyone? Brian Raman Invent. Oh my God! Local train bound for Takayasu is arriving on track three. Yeah, that's the train I want. So I'm here in downtown Osaka today. Now I'm here for ramen, but I'm actually here for a ramen lesson. I'm here for the Osaka Ramen School. There's a school about 20 minutes outside of Osaka, super close to downtown. Let's check it out. Here's my train. We're going to the Osaka Ramen School today for their one day ramen class. The class is about six hours long and the teacher will show us how to make everything that goes into a bowl, from the soup to the toppings to the noodles. Let's check it out. Yep, just a few minutes, less than 20 from downtown Osaka. And we're on this little shoten guy, this little walking street, heading to Kinkidai, Kinki University. And here you go. It wouldn't be Osaka without takoyaki, but here we go. I've been working with this school for about four years now, and we've had hundreds of students come through. A big highlight of this school is our resident translator, Ms. Akane. She's here to help facilitate not only the recipes, but a bit about ramen's history and the various styles across Japan. Here she is now writing the day's schedule. We'll first start prepping the soup. Once we get the heat going, we have time to start toppings and take a quick lunch break. Though the atmosphere is friendly, we've got a lot to do, so no naps. All right, yeah, just getting the menu for today. We're gonna make uh, we're gonna make a tonkotsu soup. We're gonna make a clear soup. We're gonna make all the toppings. We're gonna make the noodles from scratch. Basically, we're making everything in the bowl. You know, we're not growing the wheat, but we're getting pretty close to it. So yeah, we're really making this bowl from the ground up. The soup for the standard course is a creamy tonkotsu. While this kind of soup normally takes over 12 hours to cook, the Osaka Ramen School has some professional kitchen grade pressure cookers available to speed up the process. These pots have about three times the pressure of a normal pressure cooker. If you're interested in sourcing one of these, be warned. They are very expensive. Soup's almost done. By using different levels of heat, we can make both a clear soup and a creamy soup. Fatty cuts of pork are a given in most bowls of ramen. The cooking process is quite simple, but it's important to cut and tie the meat correctly. We'll cook ours in a heavily seasoned tare for maximum flavor. Feel free to take any leftovers home. You'll be eating chashu for the next week or so. Okay, so we've been downstairs prepping all day, making soup, making chashu, making tare. Now it's time to make noodles. Nice. Yep, we've got noodle machines. Upstairs we have a classroom, and more importantly, the noodle factory. You'll learn about different kinds of noodles before powering on this $20,000 behemoth. These are the same machines used in countless ramen shops around the world. I love the steady rhythm. Grab, twist, pack. Grab, twist, pack. I can see why some of the best ramen chefs prefer to make their own noodles. If the timing is right, and it always is, we're ready to plate our bowl. Ramen broth and tare seasonings made from scratch. Noodles made from scratch.
eggs made from scratch. Chashi made from scratch. I can't even describe how cool it is to make this whole bowl from the ground up. For people with dietary restrictions, the school can do a special course for you. This one is completely vegan. So we made a lot of stuff here today. There you go. The Ramen Dream Academy. Yeah, I just call it the, ramen, the Osaka Ramen School. Any kind of ramen you want to make, they can pull it off. For the longer, more professional classes, uh, you're going to focus on kind of the whole range of ramen stuff here. It's, I know people took the five-day classes and they learned a, a ton of stuff. And another cool thing about taking the longer classes is that you don't have to get a hotel. You can stay at the teacher's extra apartment. He's got his own place just for students. Walking distance from the school. Awesome. Of course you can stay in Namba. It's only 20 minutes away. But we're going to go stay. I'm going to go stay in this room. Let's go check it out. Jaiko. Please check my link in the description if you're interested in the Osaka Ramen School. Classes fill up a month or two in advance, so please give us as much time as you can to set something up. Oh, nice. All right. Let's check out the room. Oh, nice. <laughs> I love it. Okay. All right. So the room is super tiny, but what do you need, man? You're on vacation. You're cooking ramen. You got a bed? Welcome to Osaka. Oh, a little TV. Nice. And sure enough, a, oops, a bathroom. Good enough. There's a shower in there, I assure you. Yeah, no problem. Nanin. Max. Dari. Sanin. Sanin teta. Okay. So yeah, three people have fit in here, but uh, a, a couple would be fine. It's cozy. Yeah. All right. Problem, Sensei. Arigato. Come on. Yeah. Hey, a little something extra. For people taking the longer courses, the school can offer some extras, like a mini izakaya class. I learned how to make all this from a local izakaya chef who came for the day. I also took an excursion to nearby Sakai, a town with a deep history of sword and knife making. A master sharpener taught me the basics of whetstone sharpening and how to attach a handle to my blade, which I got to keep. This was an amazing experience. Sakai is the hometown of our translator, Akane, and she really hooked it up here. This was awesome. If you have any interest in knives or knife making, definitely stick around an extra day and get this going on. <laughs>